Shalom to the nation of Israel, coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Hashem, Yahweh Shai Baal Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the Apostles of Great Millstone, and to the hopeful life, pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Uh, this lesson is going to be talking about the wheat and the tares. You know, quick explanation of the wheat and the tares. So we're going to start off in Matthew. Matthew 13, 25. Okay, so we'll start at 24. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, which is Yahweh Shai talking, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went, and went his way. So the tares are basically... Well, actually, I don't want to explain it yet. But basically, if you go into, like, um, grains, tares look just like wheat, right? They look exactly the same, right? So that's why you don't want those in your field, in your in your crop, right? Because it's no good. It doesn't produce any fruit. The wheat is what produces the fruit. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Right? So the tares look just like the wheat. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? So he's like, I thought you put good, good seed in this field. Why are there tares popping up here? Right? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? So he's like, I didn't do this. Someone else did this. Came in and sowed these tares in this field. So he's like, well, should I go gather up the, you know, gather them all up? He said unto them, that was slack. But he said, nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Because the tares look just like the wheat. So you can't really tell. That's what he's saying, no, don't do that. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So the tares are a reference to these so-called, basically, Edomites. Right? You know? Because they're the, they're the father of the wicked one. And it's going to explain that. But basically, these Edomites are the tares. And Israel are the wheat. Right? That's the way it said. The tares are going to be burned up. That's another metaphor. Because it talks about in the scriptures that Esau, Edom, is going to be burned up. That Jacob is going to gather them all up and then burn them all up when we're done with them. After their uh, service of slavery for a thousand years. So that's why it's referring to the tares that, uh, uh, as in the sense that they're going to be bundled up and burned. Right, and then the weeds are being put in his barn, which is his house. Right, right, and the house you can take it in even further. It's going to be the chariots, because that's how we're going to be bundled up. And the reapers are the angels. Right, they're going to come in, gather all the wheat, and put it into the barn, which is the chariots, and then we're going to be saved. Right, and we're not going to get burned up with the tares. Right, now it's going to explain that. You know, I kind of just jumped ahead and explained it, but it's going to explain it. So we're going to go. Now to another metaphor about the wheat and the tares. Matthew 13 and 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So the good are the, the Israelites, right? And more importantly, the elect. Really, at this point, the, the good is the elect. Right, which is Israel, and but cast the bad away. So the bad in this uh, topic that we're talking about are the Edomites, Esau, Edom. But also that goes into um, the two thirds are going to get cast away. The Edomites are going to cast away. The other heathens are going to get cast away. 
because they're the bad. But right now we're just talking about the wheat and the tears, right? So that's the, the Edomites, right? They're going to get cast away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and, se and sever the wicked from the moon sever the wicked from among the just just like we just explained with the reapers coming to reap the the, the tares from the wheat and bundle them up and put it in the barn uh sorry not put it in the barn bundle them up and burn them so it's the same metaphor right so now we're gonna go to zachariah Two and six. Zechariah two and six. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Right? So we got spread abroad. We got spread across the whole planet amongst all the other nations. Right? That's Israel. But also, what happened too? These Edomites got spread abroad too. They got spread amongst all the other nations too. Hence why we read in the first pair uh, scripture about the, the devil or the wicked one coming to sow his seed into the field. So that's how Esau got scattered too. So you have Edomites looking like the other nations also, right? But more importantly, we're talking about Israel. You have Edomites that look like Israelites, right? Where you, by looking at it, you can't tell that they're Edomites. You actually can't tell, right? Hence why we need, well, hence why the angels have to come and separate, okay? You know, separate who's the who's the Israelite and who's the uh, Edomite. Who's the elect and who are the, the wicked ones? You know, the ones that are going to be meant to be the destroyed, Right? Slock for the music in the background. It's just demons. Obviously, when I'm doing a video, that's when a demon decides to play the music. Um, so Mark thirteen and twenty seven, and then shall his and then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Right. So there you go. It explains what's going to happen. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. So the elect are going to be gathered up, right? Because this time it's not about all of Israel because all of Israel is going off. So it's just the elect that are doing the right thing. They are the good vessels, right? So they're going to be uh, selected from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven, right? And separated from the tares, Right? But this is only going to happen at the end. Right? And the reason why the angels have to do it, like I said, they're the ones that can see who is a good vessel and who's a bad vessel. Who is one of the elect and who is an Edomite. Or one of the wicked ones. Right? They can see that. Because they can see the spirits. They're not looking at the flesh. They're looking at the spirits. And I will tell them everything. So now, we're going to go to... Um... Matthew thirteen forty one. Matthew thirteen and forty one. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. So there you go. So these tares, right? Because that's what we're talking about right now. These tares offend you. How about Shemuel Shai? Because they're of the wicked one. And they are, are, are what's the word I'm looking for? They're adversaries of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Right? So they offend him. So he's going to take them out. He's going to gather them. Right? So I'll read it again. The Son of the Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what happened. Like we just read about the tares being uh, bundled up and burned. Same analogy, same metaphor, right? Then shall the righteous shine forth as a son, as a son of the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear. Let him hear. 
Because now when you take all the way the, the things that offend, which is the tares, now the wheat can grow and spring out and show their fruits and be that good, good uh, uh, um, plant that they are, right? Those precious jewels, that silver, that gold, those good vessels, right? Um, right, so we have one more. And you're gonna know who's the elect, anyways. The ones that are gonna, the ones that are gonna be part of the elect are the ones that are not gonna take the chip, right? The ones that take the chip are just not part of the elect. It's just that simple, right? But it's not like we have eyes all over the whole planet knowing who's taking the chip and who's not taking the chip, right? That's why the angels have to come through and separate the the wheat from the tears. Because at the end of the day, the ones that take uh, the ones that don't take the chip are gonna be gathered up. And put it into the barn, which is the chariots, right? The ones that uh, did take the chip are going to be bundled up, right? Or left there to be burned up with these missiles and the beams from the chariots. This is the last one, Revelation 12 and 11. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Slack. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, which is Yahushai, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death, right? Because the elect are not going to love their lives unto death. Like they're going to, they're going to be tested no matter what, like to death. So it's to the point where they will be pressured to take the chip, where it might be even at gunpoint, right? Because at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's not about our lives. It's about pushing Yahweh Hashim Yahushai being on his side till death. So if you have to be killed, right? If it goes that far where they have to kill you, then so be it. You're going to come back anyways, right? You're going to come back anyways because that means you're one of the elect, right? So that's why only, one, only the elect are going to have that spirit on them and only the elect are not going to take the mark of the beast, MOTV, which is that microchip. Right, and the prelude to that is are these uh, these um, um beast brews, these these serpent serpent juice that they're putting in these uh, syringes, right? So I hope this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect. I close out by saying Kahala Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, great millstone, and to the hopeful elect pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, death and destruction to his wicked kingdom. And the two thirds as well. Kwam Yasharala, Abad Babal, Shalom.